The 2023 traded line that seemed as though it was going to be kind of a snooze fest has just gotten really hot because Kyrie Irving has asked out of Brooklyn ahead of the trade deadline. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what some potential Kyrie Irving trades look like and whether or not I even think he's actually going to be traded because I'm not actually that convinced. Real quick, if you end up enjoying this video, then drop a like because you liked it, it makes sense. Also subscribe for more of this content. It is going to be becoming more frequent, I assure you. Let's just get this right out of the way. The first and obvious team to talk about is of course the Los Angeles Lakers. This is a conversation that's really been had this entire year and it's really just fluctuated depending on how much Kyrie was feeling like being a problem for the Nets. And it seems as though he feels like being a problem once again. So first and foremost, let's talk about a potential Kyrie Irving trade to the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, obviously, this is going to be Russell Westbrook filling in the salary. And then from there, I would imagine the Lakers probably put in a 2027 or 2026, whichever year the pick is. One of those first, the lesser of them, and maybe put some sort of protection on it. In terms of Kyrie Irving's trade value, I don't actually think it's going to be very high given that he is on a one-year contract and he can just leave whatever team trades for him. Not to mention the baggage that comes with Kyrie and I'm not just talking about his handle. So with that being the case, I just want to put that out there that these trade packages are probably not going to look that big because I don't expect that if he does get moved, it is going to be anything big. And frankly, because of that, I would not be shocked if the Brooklyn Nets decided, screw it, we'll just have Kyrie for the rest of the year and whatever happens in the offseason happens in the offseason. Frankly, that's why I think there's a huge chance that he doesn't get moved. But back to the Lakers conversation, the main thing is, do we believe that this move moves the needle that significantly for the Lakers? Do the Lakers go from right now being out of the playoffs, but potentially making their way into that conversation, into a certified playoff team and a team that you're afraid of playing? Well, of course, we know that LeBron and Kyrie work well together, although this is a different version of LeBron and frankly, a different version of Kyrie. Dealing with those three offensively, him, LeBron, and AD, obviously, that's three guys who can drop 30 on any game given night without much of an effort. So already probably, is that not the best big three in the league? Because I can't think of one that's better because regardless of what you have to say about Kyrie off of the court, he's still quite good. So if he's actually gonna show up for these games, the Lakers do look like they could be quite scary. Now, if I were a betting man, I would say that they don't quite put it together and don't win this year. But I also think there's a real possibility that Kyrie would re-sign with the Lakers and from there they could win that year. And putting together a team this significantly at a traded line this late into the season. Generally not something that ends up working out. Making trades at the deadline usually doesn't actually affect championships by any means. Really the only one that you can really think of, especially in recent history, would be Marcus Gasol on the 2019 Raptors. But generally speaking, teams don't form at the trade deadline and then win. It's possible, but it's not likely. So that's what I would bet if he goes to the Lakers. But as much as the Lakers have been dominating this conversation, I do think there are a couple of other, other teams in the league that have have a genuine stake in this conversation because there are a couple of teams in this league that are at a similar point of desperation um, or at least some level of desperation and you kind of need at least a little bit a little bit of that to be trading for Kyrie Irving so let's talk about the other team in Los Angeles the Clippers now they've been rumored for Fred Van Vliet but I see no good reason why you wouldn't offer basically the same exact trade package that you would for Fred Van Vliet for Kyrie Irving because Kyrie is much better than Fred especially this year but both of them are on short-term deals and Fred was looking for some super big contract. So is Kyrie Irving, but at least for a one-year rental. Now you have Kawhi, 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 PG, and Kyrie Irving. That is a pretty compelling big three. Uh, I do wonder if with the ball handling duties being shared between those three, if Kyrie would have to become more of an off-ball player. Of course, that would obviously happen if he played alongside LeBron James. One way or the other, definitely would be a home run for the Clippers if they don't have to give up too many big assets contract-wise. Like anybody that's actually a key part of the rotation. There might be one or two, but hopefully not much more than that. And just throw in another late first-round pick that has some sort of protection on it. I imagine that's probably 
probably the best that the Nets are going to be able to receive, if not some rotation players that can contribute to what the Nets are doing right now, which honestly might actually be what they're more interested in. But with that said, the other team that has been talked about quite a bit has been the Dallas Mavericks. Now, the other day a report came out that it seemed like the odds of Christian Wood being traded from the Mavericks were significantly large. Like, it looked like there was a real chance that was going to happen. And I would say that's stupid unless you're trading him for Kyrie Irving. If that's the way this is going, it makes a lot of sense for both sides because Christian Wood is somebody that can replicate at least to some degree a good amount of scoring punch that you're going to lose by moving Kyrie Irving while um, being, you know, more of a big man and probably pairs better with um, Kevin Durant. I say more of a big man like Kyrie's kind of a big man. If the Nets are most looking for a player that is going to be able to contribute right now, a player that's going to make it to where the loss of Kyrie doesn't sting as much, Christian Wood might actually be the best caliber player that they're going to be receiving back. So if they ended up getting like Christian Wood and Dorian Finney-Smith and like a second round pick and the Mavericks got Kyrie Irving, suddenly the Nets actually got a pretty decent return given the context of the situation but the the Mavericks would also be cool making that move. And then at that point, you have the duo of Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. Again, there is a lot of ball handling there, so that mix will certainly be interesting, but as a whole, in totality, I'm quite confident that that will work out in the long run, especially given both of their ability to shoot the ball, although Luka is generally much better shooting the ball off with a dribble. But all that said, the Mavericks make a ton of sense, the Clippers make a ton of sense, and the Lakers make a ton of sense. And I really think it will just come down to who puts out the better trade package right now I'd honestly lean towards the Dallas Mavericks just because Christian Wood is a really compelling player to throw in there if we're looking around the rest of the league as for some other potential teams there's really not any that stand out significantly you could maybe see the Timberwolves getting involved because they've been looking for a point guard upgrade the Wizards love doing things that don't really make that much sense for their timeline so maybe they would hop in on this Phoenix Suns that one could be interesting because of course Chris Paul's aging has made it to where they were interested in Fred Van Vliet really this kind of screws over Fred Van Vliet for any potential of being moved at the deadline because now there is a better point guard available and the Phoenix Suns would likewise be interested in Kyrie Irving and yeah I do think if you can pull that off while keeping Chris Paul on your bench uh, that would be pretty substantial would you move DeAndre Ayton in that? Because I, if you want to guarantee you get Kyrie, just an Ayton-Kyrie swap straight up would work. But I feel like you still want to keep Chris Paul. Would you do a Chris Paul for Kyrie swap? I don't think so. But maybe, I don't know. Phoenix is at a very weird point right now. Uh, and Chris Paul has been better as of late to give him some credit for that. But looking around the other teams in the league, I don't see a lot of other teams that make sense other than really those four and really those core three above the Suns. So... With all that said, let's talk about what I think is real important here, which is that there is a serious likelihood that I don't think Kyrie is moving, period. This could very well end up just being a negotiating tactic. We know that Kyrie loves to stir shit up for practically nothing. And in this instance, he actually has something to be a little upset about because he wants a contract extension. Now, I would say, look in the mirror as to why you're not getting that contract extension. But that aside, just looking at the straight up situation, I would understand why he would want to get paid that long-term deal so this could just be a tactic to ensure that he gets a long-term deal and if that is the case then he's just kind of stringing us along and wasting our time or the Brooklyn Nets are not going to be willing to give him that deal and what I think happens if that's the case is they kind of just say look Kyrie we're going to play out the year assuming that Kyrie is not going to be a child and refuse to play we're going to play out the year whatever happens after that we'll have to see but Frankly, the Nets are in a good enough position as a basketball team to be really good and go on a deep playoff run. And given that possibility, especially with how much of a disaster the last couple of years have been, from that point, I would not be surprised whatsoever uh, if the Nets were like, we just gotta, we just gotta take that we're good now and roll with it. And if Kyrie leaves after, Kyrie leaves after. And I completely understand why they would have that perspective. And frankly, I think that's probably what they will ultimately end up doing. That's said honestly what makes me even stronger feeling in that opinion is that he decided to do this with six days remaining 
for the traded line. It's a really short time to be negotiating deals. It's a really short time to get a player off of a, a roster while ensuring that you get a good return. And again, with Kyrie, the problem with him for other for, for, the, for the Nets is that the value that he brings as a basketball player is far more significant than the value he brings as a trade asset. So if the Nets are just trying to be as good as they possibly can be, trading Kyrie would be a mistake. But asset management, long-term future, all of that. Um, granted, the return will not affect the future that dramatically, I don't think. I don't know. Uh, there's a chance he goes, but if I were a betting man, I would say that Kyrie is still in Brooklyn on February 10th. But yeah, that is it. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video, and goodbye.